Hello planty people, welcome back to my channel. I am Empress Eerie and this is Plant Tips with Empress. So I'm here today to talk about soil. Now this is a video that I have been asked for and also one that I've mentioned that I was going to be doing in some of my past videos and so we're here today to do it. So we're going to be talking about a few different things today. Uh, firstly I'm going to put some timestamps up on the screen for you right here. There we go, look at them. I feel like one of those, like, I should be turning letters. <laughs> so there are the timestamps of what I'm going to be talking about in this video today. There's going to be a few different topics, so it's going to be a long one. So if you need to skip ahead, feel free to jump to where you need to be. But firstly, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about why different soils are important. Some people might be there going, but Empress, why can't I just buy a bag of dirt from the hardware store and just throw my plant in it and just get on with my life? Well, I mean, you can, but your plant might not get on with its life, <laughs> or at least not its best life. So, you know, as we know, plants come from all different parts of the world and they live in all different kinds of environment environments. And we're trying to replicate this environment in our homes or in our yards or in just in our lives and so it's really important that we give our plants the best opportunities they can because they may not be living in the best environment already i you know live in a city that gets some pretty extreme temperature changes it gets really hot in summer it gets really cold in winter and it gets dry and then it can get rainy periods as well so you know like most places it's not a rainforest like this is a rainforest plant this is a rainforest plant it's not a desert this is a desert plant this is you know things like that so you know my house has an environment that's not ideal for some plants so what I want to try and do is give it every opportunity to live its best life and soil is one way that I can control that helps it live its best life so what I'm going to be doing next is I am going to be getting into what ingredients I have in front of me, what these all are. These are the four mixes that I'm going to be talking about today. There are four different types of mix here. Um, and I'm going to be talking about what's in them and why I've mixed them this way. So yeah, I hope you enjoy this video. I'm going to get up and move the camera a little bit so it's a bit closer in and you can have a better view of what's happening here while I explain the ingredients and the mixes. So yeah, let's get into it. So we're in a bit of a close-up now and I hope you can hear me okay. I'm outside again and I am on a busy street so the ambient noise is real. I promise I'll get a microphone at some point um, but it's not today. <laughs> so what I have here are my ingredients and my mixes. Well not all of my ingredients, these are some of my ingredients and then my mixes. So firstly, I want to put a disclaimer, a little disclaimer, yes, on everything, that this is what works for me. This is what works with my budget. If I had a higher budget, I'd probably be adding some different things to some of this, but I'm working with a fairly low budget, and these are things that I've collected over time. You don't have to buy all this at once. I have bought these things over time, and I've bought them online so that I, um, you know, get them cheaper. And so just a little, you know, upfront disclaimer, these are mixes that work for me, that have been working in my home, in my environment, and so you may need to tweak them for your environment. Uh, so just that little upfront thing right there. And secondly, I want to mention a safety thing. Now I'm going to practice what I preach today and I'm going to be wearing gloves. I found these gloves, which are eco-friendly, biodegradable, uh, disposable gloves and I'm going to be using these today and um, I also have some gardening gloves that I use a lot and because I'm doing some delicate fine work today I'll be using these but if I was just working in my garden I just I mean to be honest I'm pretty bad and I do a lot of things barehanded when I know I shouldn't but I did buy gloves recently like nice fitting comfortable gardening gloves and I've actually been using them a lot and it's been really you know it makes me feel good and I'm actually starting to feel kind of more and more you know uncomfortable feeling handling things without 
tools or without gloves. So that's another thing is, you know, some of the ingredients aren't necessarily the best for your health. So you want to make sure that, you know, you just take, your, take care of yourself as well. So one of those safety things I want to mention is there is, if you're using bagged soil, I'll be mentioning bagged soil in a little while, there are some microbes in there that you want to be careful of. And if you get them under your fingernails and the things like that, and then you end up, you know, not kind of cleaning under your fingernails 100% and then they end up in things that you're preparing for, you could end up sick. And then also I want to mention that one of the ingredients I have here, this is perlite, this white one here, it's called perlite. Now I learnt from a post by Christian Vega on Facebook that um, I will pop up right now. That um, I learnt that it can be quite dangerous and so you really want to watch out for perlite and you want to treat it properly so you want to make sure you're not getting your face all too close to it you want to try and I should be wearing a mask but I'm going to be talking and so I'm going to you know not be doing that however um I do wet my perlite and so this has been previously wet it's a bit dry now and I need to wet it again however um I do like to store my perlite wet so that's just a side note and um this perlite's really it's so dry at the moment so yeah, i won't be i won't be stirring that perlite up too much i'm just going to leave it in the container far away from me <laughs> so watch out for that just be careful just take be careful take care of your health <laughs> all right so what ingredients i have here is i'm just going to put these to the side for a second um so what i have here is i have orchid bark so this is a pretty medium like chunk orchid bark because I pot some smaller and larger plants I wanted something in between that wasn't going to be too um, chunky and in my smaller pots but wasn't going to be too small in my bigger pots so I like this size um, I will put up on the screen the more details because I can't remember off the top of my head so um, I really like this size. I'm really enjoying it. Um, I've only had this for a few weeks now, but I've started potting quite a few things with it and I really like it. I, I learned about orchid bark from Kaylee Allen's channel, who I do mention a lot because she's amazing. So um, I will link her channel in the bottom as well as Harley G. Harley G got me onto orchid bark as well. I will link her channel in the bottom so if you follow those lovely human beings you will recognize some of the ingredients I use and how I've tweaked their mixes for my own so I don't want to claim ownership over some of this this is just how I've tweaked things for myself so anyway this is orchid bark and I really love it uh, as I mentioned just before this is perlite uh, perlite is a volcanic rock. It is used for drainage. Um, it does break down over time. So you can use pumice instead. So if you want to and you don't want or you can't find perlite and you can find pumice, pumice is fine. So you can find finely ground pumice stone that is, you know, to a similar grade as the perlite. Um, perlite is easier and cheaper for me to find. So I'm currently using perlite. Um, perlite can float to the top if you're a heavy waterer so just be aware of that that over time you know you will need to repot things with perlite in it once a year but I will usually do that anyway because of growth cycles so you know I don't get too concerned about the fact that the perlite floats to the top because of the fact that I know that in six to twelve months I'm going to be repotting whatever it is anyway because it's probably going to have outgrown its pot because I don't oversize my pots too much. Uh, next we have some horticultural grade charcoal. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Oh dear. Um, so I just choked on a bit of dust. Um, so this is horticultural grade charcoal. Um, I like to mix that in for extra chunk and filtration. Um, I really love a, like a chunky soil. I'm really kind of super obsessed with chunk in my soil. Um, and so then I also have horticultural uh, plant grade sand. Um, and so you'll see where this comes in later. And in my bucket here, 
which you can't see because it's big and off screen. Um, I have my Coco Core, Core uh, Power Core. Koya, Koya, Core. I don't know how it's said. People say it differently all over, so it's it's this stuff. <laughs> and um, if you look at this, this is just freshly wet. So I'm just dropping it in everything because these were only here to look pretty for the first shots. It doesn't matter if they look pretty after this. <laughs> um, so this is uh, yeah the Coco stuff. Uh, that I also use in the mix. It's really good at holding moisture um, and it's, yeah, it's fantastic. So, um, yeah, so we've got this one, which holds moisture, the sand, which helps with sandiness and drainage, kind of, yeah. Charcoal, which helps with more chunk to the soil. And they say it also helps with um, like absorbing, you know, impurities and like, chemicals out of your soil they say it's you know really not bad ones but like how am I explaining I'm explaining this so badly oh my goodness um, <laughs> so the charcoal is supposed to act kind of like a filter um if you know you know charcoal is used in fish tank filters if you can get activated charcoal it apparently works better but this is what I have access to so it's what I'm using at the moment and it's horticultural charcoal and um it apparently cleanses you know helps cleanse the soil I guess is the best way of putting it draw out impurities anyway that's what they say and I like using it so I use it <laughs> and then we have the perlite which is used for spacage in drainage so it kind of puts spacing in between your substrates so that it helps the water drain through and it helps make sure that you're not getting waterlogged and you've got lots of drainage in there because drainage is important drainage is so important drainage is king um and then we have the orchid bark now orchid bark holds a bit of moisture in it and it also is another thing that acts with drainage and they also say that it has some nutrients in it of its own that it um you know releases as well now um if i had some i would also be adding worm castings um but I don't have any. Uh, it's a bit expensive at the moment for me to purchase them, so I don't have any worm castings. Uh, but yeah, if I did, I would be adding that. Instead, I just regularly feed my plants. Worm castings is worm poo, basically, and it acts like a slow-release fertilizer, a natural slow-release fertilizer. Um, my mum used worm castings and worm juice, which is basically the wee and the liquid runoff and um sorry for getting gross up in here and my mum would use that as a kid and my gosh did it just do amazing things for the garden <laughs> so um I really want to see if I can get some off her if her worm farm's still doing well enough um otherwise I'll have to save up and get some so at the moment I just add uh, some natural fertilizer to my plants about once a month instead of having some in my substrate. Uh, and then I'm going to raise the camera back up again. Hello. And then I'm going to show you, so this, this is probably the, one of the only commercial soils I currently use. This one is available, it's an Australian brand and I'm not sure how easy to find it is in other places. I can only find it at like the Magnet Mart, Home Timber and Hardware sort of chain stores. It's not held by Bunnings. As far as I've seen at my local stores, it might be in other cities, but it's not where I am. So yeah, I have seen it online. It's um, a little bit more expensive than some of the cheaper cactus and succulent mixes, but I really like this mix because um, I will pull out some of it and show you why. So what we have here is dropping it everywhere again. I'm going to put this back down. So what you can see in here is you can see it's quite pebbly and there's a lot of rocks in there and there is some slow release fertilizer in this mix. So I like to use a little bit of this in most of my substrate mixes because it adds just that little bit of organic matter and just that little bit of fertilizer and there are, I don't know how easily it's going to show, but there are some very small pebbles like fine gravel in this mix. The problem I found with the Bunnings Oz, oh, I think is it Osmocote? Um, 
mix is that it's very organic and so it has a lot of like tree bark and sort of soil in it and that's not good for succulents and I find that that just waterlogs a lot so I really like this Debco I think that's how you say it one and I'm just gonna dump that back in the bag um, I really like that one because I find that it um, it doesn't hold as much moisture but it gives me the, what I want so I'm gonna show you in here what I've got here this is some really cheap potting mix that was left here by someone else this is not mine I did not buy this <laughs> and I'm just gonna pull it out and show you what's in this so here is some really you know cheap regular potting mix you can see it's all exactly the same consistency and it's all like the same organic matter over and over there's no fertilizer in there there's nothing there's nothing to help with drainage it's just yeah so what that sort of soil does is it can kind of turn quite sludgy in your pot it retains way too much moisture it can yeah, it's 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 not good for your plants okay don't please don't buy the cheapest potting mix it's not worth it for your babies if you're gonna spend money on beautiful plants spend money on what they go in it's important it's really important <laughs> all right so excuse me I need a drink of water <laughs> all right I just splashed water all over myself and I was gonna edit that out but have a laugh because I'm ridiculous like that I'm now drenched I'm gonna just keep talking <laughs> all right so next I'm gonna move on to my mixes so that's the ingredients talked about and I kind of mashed ingredients and safety and together so sorry about that but it's done now so Next, let's move on to different mixes. All right, mix one that we're going to talk about is, oh, what one should we start with? I reckon we start with cactus and succulents. So I have some of my succulents here that need to be repotted. These are new little babies that I got from a local seller that I, they're just so cute. Um, and they need to be repotted. And so what I will be potting them in is this first mix here. So this first mix here, this is my kind of go-to for succulents and cacti. Now, like I said in the disclaimer, this is a general thing. This is for my general cactuses and succulents. If I do research and find out that the species that I'm working with needs more drainage or it needs to be drier I will add more things for drainage and less soil from the bag than I would for like my just my general ones so what we have in here is a mix of about half perlite half of the bagged soil and then I have so that would probably be about Let's kind of hazard a guess. About 30, 30 of soil and perlite. And then the rest is equal parts of the charcoal and the sand. And so what you can see in here is that it is a really gritty mix. It is very much replicating the sort of environment that they would find in the wild, which is, you know, high drainage, they're a desert plant. They're not going to live in something that's gonna retain a lot of water. So this soil drains really, really fast. It does not stay moist. Whereas some of my other soil mixes here have things in it that retain moisture. So this is my driest, almost my driest mix. If I was doing a drier mix, I'd add more sand and more perlite, but this is my standard driest mix, which is my cacti and succulent mix. So you can see the sand, you can see the perlite, of course, and you can see that there's little chunks of charcoal in here. So there's the charcoal. There is no orchid bark in this, and there is no none of the cocoa peat in here either. So that 
is the two things that retain moisture and there is none of either of those because the dirt substrate from the bag holds enough moisture as it is. It already holds enough moisture and then I will not water my succulents until this mix is bone dry, bone, bone dry. And then I will give them a tiny little water and it drains straight out the bottom. Now this uh, mix I also use for all of my string of varieties, string of hearts, string of pearls, string of tears, etc, etc. Except for my string of dolphins, uh, string of turtles. String of turtles will actually go in more of the aroid mix that I will get to soon. And that's because they prefer a little bit of moisture in comparison to most succulents. So yeah, this is my succulent and string of mix. So next mix I'm going to move on to is my Hoya mix. Now this one is a mix that I only just got the hang of and I am really thankful to videos from Harley G about her Hoyas and a few of the other people on YouTube and blogs and I've done so much research on Hoyas in the last I will get to a Hoya video eventually but I'm still just making sure that now I've got the hang of it and once I get like some really great new growth on some of my Hoyas then I will be doing a video as to my Hoya care tips. But I finally got my Hoya soil down and I'm so happy about it because that was one thing I was really struggling with because they weren't quite liking this mix, which I really thought they would, and then they really didn't. So um, I'm really glad to have finally figured it out <laughs> because it, it was, it was bugging me. <laughs> and the secret turned out to be the orchid bark. The orchid bark turned out to be my lifesaver and what I needed were these little wood chips. So the reason for that is Hoyas are tree growers. They like hang up in the trees when you walk through the jungle. They're like draping down around you. And so they don't like to sit in a wet substrate, but they like moisture because trees hold moisture in their bark and so would like the moss and the other things that were growing around it but it wouldn't sit in soil so that's the thing that I've had to get used to with Hoyas so what I've done with my Hoya mix is um so what we have in here is it is very very similar to my succulent mix so I do my succulent mix as a base and then what I add in is a couple of handfuls of you know, for this sort of size, is the orchid bark. Now, I can't really give you measurements. I'm not one who measures things out, but I will show you the consistency and what you're kind of trying to aim for. So I hope that that helps. So I did try to give percentages on the other one, and I, you know, I will adjust them and try and add them on the screen now, but they are going to only be guesses. These percentages are not any kind of fact okay so please just you know use your judgment and have a look at this consistency so what we have here is I also added a tiny little bit a uh, bit of the core peat in here and so it has just that little bit more moisture retention in the bark and the peat but as you can see it is chunky as so water is going to just drain straight through and it's just going to drain past those roots and it's going to get trapped in these moisture holders that aren't going to be sopping wet and then the roots can kind of feed back off that. So I'm finding Hoyas also do really well in Lekka. Um, I don't know enough about Lekka to do a video on that but give me six months or so. <laughs> um, but yeah so this is the Hoya mix and as you can see it's super chunky and the reason that they do well in a really really chunky mix like this and they do really well in something like Lekka is because the water passes past the roots but it doesn't sit on them and in them and it doesn't sit in that water because they're really really susceptible to root rot so this is my super chunky Hoya mix that's got a lot of sand and it's got a lot of you know orchid bark and it's got a lot of the perlite in it and it's got a little bit of that bag mix but not very much it's actually got less than that um now that i think about it it's got less than that one excuse me i have to pause 
So now that I've banished my dogs to inside the house, um, I will move on. So I think I've said everything I need to about the Hoya mix. It's chunky, but it also retains a little bit of moisture and it's a little bit gritty, but it's not so gritty that it's not, you know, retaining any moisture. And then, you know, it drains really, really fast. So, you know, when I water my Hoyas, most of my Hoyas are actually in plastic nursery pots in ceramic pots that are too big and too long so they actually sit in the top and then they drain through to the bottom where it sits in the like the, any water comes straight through and doesn't sit anywhere near the plant or I take them out water them in a sink let it float flow straight through and then take them back out again I don't butt chug as people are calling it or bottom water my hoyas because I find then it absorbs too much moisture I want that moisture to pass through like a rain trickle coming down the tree I don't want it to absorb from the bottom because I feel like then it's getting everything a bit too wet for my experience I've had a lot of issues with my hoyas getting sad because they are just staying a bit too wet and that I'm finding this is what's working for me is having this really really chunky mix which has been working brilliantly and then a quick drain through and then the bark and the cocoa holding that water in all right let's move on so next is aroids now when i say aroids i'm talking philodendron, uh, monstera, pothos, those sort of varieties. Um, they are a tropical jungle plant, so they love moisture and humidity and all of that sort of stuff, but also they don't like being soggy. So I find that with my monsteras and philodendrons, they love a, like a nice chunky mix. Now the mix I have here is very, very similar to Kaylee Allen's Aroid mix, so I'm going to put that link directly in the comments in the description <laughs> because um, that's almost where I got this one. Except I don't have the worm castings in here, like I mentioned at the start, because I don't have them. And so, you know, it is what it is. So, this is the Aroid mix that I have taken from Kaylee Ellen, except um, I have added a little handful of that bag mix um just for the fertilizer and things that are in it and then so but there's really not much it's really just mostly the aroid mix that kaylee allen has talked about in her videos so what's in here is there is the um orchid bark the perlite there is uh the charcoal there is no sand there is a tiny little bit of the bag and yeah and that's what's in this one and so it is a super duper chunky mix it is like chunky as and it really loves yeah so the monsteras and philodendrons and those sort of things really love having something nice and chunky so again that the water kind of passes through and they stay you know there's a lot of the core in here um so i'm putting the percentages up my guesstimated percentages. <laughs> so in this one we have the koa, the koya, koa, koya, cocoa, cocoa, the cocoa peat, as I called it before, that's so much easier. I have the cocoa peat in here, uh, orchid bark, perlite, charcoal, um, and a little bit of the bag mix in approximately these percentages ish. <laughs> All right, uh, next is my final one here, which I'm going to be using on this beautiful baby here today. And this is my Calathea prayer plant sort of mix. So I've been using this for my prayer plants, which I've only just started getting the hang of in the last two months. And then in the last two months, all of mine are just taking off. I'm so excited, um, month and a half. Yeah, because I got a whole bunch of them at the start of August and now I'm kind of obsessed and they're all shooting out so much growth and they're so happy and this is the mix they're in, so I'm calling that a win. Uh, so this one is uh, the Cocoa Peat, it is the Orchid Bark, it is a little bit of charcoal and it is Perlite. So this one is my moistest, moistest, moist, 
most moist. And now anybody who hates that word is now sitting there cringing in their seat and I'm very sorry. But I don't know. Wettest? Wetter. Wettiest. <laughs> so this is the most water retaining mix in the fall uh, because the calatheas and the prayer plants they really love that moisture but as you can see it is really chunky as well because of the orchid bark and the perlite so the drainage is still nice and high on this one and they're not gonna like sit in a heap of water uh, like you see a lot of plants come in pure peat and it's really bad for them and it leads to root rot and the likes a lot of the time I have noticed of course there are gonna be people who are like no that didn't happen for me and it's like yeah that's, that, that's great I love that that didn't happen for you I'm so happy your plant didn't die but I've had a lot die from that horrible peat moss stuff that comes around cheap plants so if you need a plant that if you have a plant that needs a high moisture spectrum this is kind of where I end up is this sort of this sort of mix because I can still water it fairly regularly um, but I don't have to water it constantly like if I had the calatheas and my prayer plants in say the Hoya or the Aroid mix I would have to water them so much and I'd probably end up overwatering them ironically because of that so it's just yeah this is part of why soil is important to have the right type of soil for the right type of plant so yeah so that is in scale of most moist to least moist we have the aroid mix we have the Hoya uh no I said that all wrong, didn't I? Let's try that again, shall we? <laughs> we have the Calathea prayer plant mix. We have the Aroid, Philodendron, Monstera, etc., etc. mix. Then we have the Hoya mix. And then I have my cactus and succulent mix. So I here, I probably should have done it in a different color order to symbolize what was happening here, but I just picked them at random. And <laughs> so on scale of driest to least driest, the cactus and succulent mix that we have here will dry out and will dry out quite quickly. And that's kind of what you want it to do. And you want it to stay nice and dry so that your cacti and succulent can replicate their traditional environment because that's what it's all about and then we have the Hoya mix which again I'm trying to replicate that environment as much as possible and so that's going to be a little bit moist because tropical rainforest you know that's where we're trying to go but hanging in a tree on a tropical rainforest so we've got a lot of orchid bark like a lot of orchid bark we've got charcoal we've got the perlite we've got the peat we've got the sand and then my aroid mix which is basically Kaylee Allen's aroid mix and then it is the orchid bark the peat a little tiny bit of my bag mix you know and the likes as I've just talked about and then we have the super moist prayer plant mix so I hope this has been helpful I hope I haven't rambled too much I have a tendency to do that but I hope I packed all the information I wanted to in. I've got a little note sheet there that I've been trying to read and hopefully I haven't missed anything. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below and I would love to hear if this has been helpful for you or if you use something different. I love to hear what other people use. I find it really interesting because then I can kind of snoop it and investigate it for myself and see if it's something that might work for me. So if you have some amazing substrate trick that you love, please let me know. Um, and yeah, so this is kind of my beginner's soil mixes, I suppose you would say. Of course, if you're a much more advanced grower, you're gonna know all about this and you're gonna have your own special recipe that is just yours. And I love that. It's kind of like witches and their potions or like chefs and their kitchens. It's like everybody has their own cool recipe that is just theirs that they've honed for a long time. And these are, these are mine, so. Here are my recipes. I hope you like them. I hope you enjoy them. I hope your plants like them. And now the sun has moved and I look terrible compared to how cute I looked at the start of the video. <laughs> 
Anyway, I'm Empress Siri. Please like and subscribe and, you know, do all those things that make YouTube work. And yeah, keep growing like your plants. Thanks for watching. Bye.